for this one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to find a compute A inverse. Yeah, we find the inverse of this matrix using row operations. So by performing row operation, we are going to compute A inverse. So, uh, yeah, two, two, five, two, five. So how many participants do we have? Uh, we have 71 participants over. So, uh, uh, that's good. Yep. Mm. Three, third row, let me copy the third row one. So one, zero, eight. All right, this is your matrix A. So we are going to find the inverse matrix of A. So how do you do that? Just copy your matrix A. One, zero, eight. And include the identity matrix, three by three and identity matrix with this. So now you perform row operations to this. So we try to make, we try to make this uh, matrix to, we try to convert this one to identity one. And the resultant of this one would be our A inverse. So I hope this makes sense, right? So if you if you perform uh, row operations, you can reduce this one to identity or reduce HLN form. Yep, reduce HLN, right? Uh, what is the word? Uh, reduce HLN, reduce, yep, this one here. Reduce row HLN, yep, otherwise reduce. Other one will be row HLN. All right. So try to reduce this one to re, uh, reduce HLN form. That means uh, we try to convert this one to identity matrix. Then your know, this part would be A inverse, right? Let's do that one together, right? So all right. To aha. Uh -huh. All right. This is your first row. Focus on that, and this is your first element in the first row. Uh, this is already one, right? Don't need to do anything, right? But you have to make uh, these elements equal to zero, right? To convert this one to identity, right? Let's do that. Let's perform. Uh, these operations, I don't have space to write that. So I will do the operation to R1 and R third row, yep, R3. So let's define this operation. What is my operation? Yep. I'll multiply the first uh, row by two minus two and add the result and one with the second row. Then I replace that one uh, to row oh, two, right? And, and let's define this one. Uh -huh. uh, because this is one, how to make this one equal to one? Just I multiply, I multiply negative one by uh, row one and add with row two, this is row two, yep. So let's perform that, all right. I can't see the screen, that's the, yep. Okay, right, let's for perform that. Uh, this remains that we do nothing 
uh, the first row, it remains the same. Okay, it remains the same once it was here. But, so you multiply it to make this equal to zero. Yeah, we do this operation. Let's do that. This becomes zero. Uh, negative to negative four, add that up. Mm. With that, then this becomes one. Negative two, negative six plus three, negative three. Uh, yep, this is this becomes two. Negative two, negative two, right? negative two. Right, and multiply the first row by yep, does yep, because these are zeros, so this remains the same. One zero that is your first row, and uh, let's perform this row operation to this, then this becomes zero, uh, then this becomes negative two. Uh, negative uh, and five, yep, five. Ooh, it takes time, yep. Let's go to our no yep. thing. I think you understand that, right? Yep, here, look at this. If you perform, if you make these things all element under the pivot one, it should be set to zero, right? So to set to zero, you had to do these uh, row operations. So the then this becomes zero, then this, yep. And then this is, yep, all right. And the other side is one, this remains the same. And this one becomes, the second row becomes negative two, one, zero. Yep. And third row becomes this. And then, and we have to make this one equal to zero again, right? And you can perform a row operation to this row, right? So you can multiply the second row by two and add that one with the third row. Then you get zero here, right? and do the same for other elements and then you can get these uh, numbers, right? And finally, we have to make this one to one. Yep, then you can uh, make this one to zero again, right? How do you make this one to zero? make this one equal to zero, you can do that. You can perform row operations, right? Uh, multiply the second uh, row by negative two and add that one with the first row. Then you can make this one, uh, this one equal to zero. Like that, like that you can perform row operation and this uh, will reduce to this will reduce to this one. And the other side is our in inverse of A. So this is reduced to this one, this bit, this bit, this A matrix is reduced to identity matrix here. Yeah. Then other one is converted to this. So this one would be the A inverse, right? I think this makes sense to you. If you have any questions, you can ask now. Do you have any questions? Uh, regarding uh, finding a inverse using row operations. This is the thing. So A, you want to reduce A to identity matrix. Then this becomes your 
anus. All right. I hope this makes sense, right? So do these exercises, right? Do these exercises. Uh, right, do you have any question before I move, move into next section? Do you have any questions? Uh, yep. So question, do you have any questions, doubts? Regarding row operations, now you can reduce any matrix to HLN form. Either reduce HLN form or, or this form. HLN row, yeah, reduce or row HLN form. This is called row HLN form. Don't care about these elements, but you want to reduce or reduce HLN form, this should be equal to zero. Yep. Do you have any questions, uh, any doubts before moving into the next section? section? So today I'm going to cover how to find eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and what is a character characteristic polynomial equation or polynomial and this part I will do a small video on diagonalization I don't have thing I don't have time to explain everything uh, yep yep all right so does this make sense any questions regarding raw operations so try to reduce if you are given a system like this so try to reduce this one to hln form or hln form more column can use anything raw hln or column hln anything right and do do raw hln raw hln right so this is when yeah this is row hln this should be considered this all right okay so um i move to next section right so now we are going to find eigenvalues eigenvectors for a given matrix so this is this part here so i have to yeah let me zoom up. So I have, I have covered these things to determine solution of linear equation. Kramer, so I now have to do this part of the application to my culture. All right. So today we are going to cover the statistic polynomial, Kalianitel, Hamilton. Yep. So diagonalization, I think I don't have time to do, cover this thing, this part. I will do a video on this, right? All right, let's discuss this now. Of course, you haven't done these things before, right? You should have learned these things in your first year, I think, I don't know, right? Haven't learned these things. In first year, all right, let's do that. All right, eigenvalue. Let's uh, go to the definition of eigenvalues, right? So, all right, let's uh, consider any to n by n matrix, any square matrix, right? So, a scalar lambda is a scalar, a real number, right? A number, not real number, a number it can be complex or real, don't know, right? So, so scalar lambda is called an eigenvalue of A if the X is a non zero. This one is very important non zero vector X, non zero, non zero, all right? Non zero vector in. Uh, we don't need to say R uh, n if you 
if this is a complex, this would be complex. Uh, not in n, right? So non-zero, this one is very important. Non-zero vector, n dimension column vector such that ax is equal to lambda times x, right? So if you multiply matrix A by this non-zero uh, column vector, so you can you man you can manage to obtain a scalar in front of the column vector. Let's do that. Let's try to understand that one. So let's consider this matrix two by two square matrix. And suppose these two non-zero vectors, column vectors, right? So let's multiply uh, this one with this, right? Let's consider these two, right? Let's try to multiply these two matrices, right? Then you can get here, this one here. So this, so when you multiply this matrix with this column vector, you get this. Uh, you can see that negative four is common. You can take it out, right? This one is equal to negative four times. Let me look at this. Negative four times four is minus twenty-four. Negative four times negative five is equal to positive 20, you can, negative four is common, take it out. Then the, what are the leftovers? So four and five. And you can see that, uh, oh, this should be six here. Yeah. Yeah. right? So you can notice that this is your U, right? You manage to, get the scalar times your u vector u, vector u here, right? A times that vector u is equal to a scalar times that vector u. So this is called, yeah, this one is, the, uh, this is the eigen value corresponding to this, Vector. Someone is asking a question. Five A's, five A's. Five. What is that? Minus five, minus five. Yeah, this should be my, thank you, thank you. This should be minus five. Yeah. And this is your vector U. So this one is equal to a times vector u is equal to is equal to a scalar time that vector column vector right. So this is the eigenvalue corresponding to this vector right. So likewise, you can find those eigenvalues. For instance, if you multiply these two matrices this one with this, if you multiply those two matrices, right? So you get something like this column vector, but you cannot, you are, I think you are unable to find a scalar lambda, such as lambda equals, uh, no, this one a u is equal to lambda times the column vector All right so you are unable to find a scalar lambda such that a u is equal to lambda u so so for this uh, vector you cannot you are unable to find an eigenvalue, but for this one, you can find an eigenvalue. 
the eigenvalue uh, is this one. Minus one is the eigenvalue to this, but you cannot find eigenvalue to this column vector. All right. All right. So, all right. So, for a given matrix, let's find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, uh, this one is called, this u is called because au equals minus four, a scalar times that vector u. So this is the icon, this is called, the scale is called icon value corresponding to this vector. And this one is called icon vector, right? This one is called icon vector. This is the icon value, right? Okay. So if you are given, uh, if you are given a matrix, square matrix, Let's uh, try to understand uh, how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. All right, so well, let's do that. So A, so here look at this. A is an, an by n matrix or square matrix. If uh, with, uh, with uh, lambda, eigenvalue lambda corresponding eigenvector is X. Then we know that a x is equal to lambda x, right? This is true because lambda is an eigenvalue of this matrix, and corresponding eigenvector is x. So corresponding eigenvector is x. Then we know that this one satisfies. This equation is true, right? So this implies that. Right, you can take one of terms uh, to other side. Let's take this term to other side. So, all right, here look at this. You can see that you can notice that x is common. The vector x is common. You can pull out the vector x from the right hand from the right hand side. So this, uh, so a. So the, what are the remaining matrices? A here minus, so lambda times the identity matrix, right? So don't write lambda only, right? So because lambda is a scalar here, so this should be an n by n matrix, that's why. So you know that I is an identity, if I n, Identity matrix i times any right? this one is equal to x, right? Because this is identity matrix, right? So put that one in, right? This one is equal to i x. Uh -huh. I is no x is common. Take it out, and what are the leftovers? A minus lambda i, right? All right, so this one, uh, this becomes zero. When you multiply this matrix with X, uh, column vector, eigenvector, so this becomes zero column vector, right? So, and there's another definition, right? If you consider the determinant of this matrix, determinant of this matrix, it is called the characteristic equation of matrix A. There's another definition, right? So if lambda is eigenvalue of A, that means uh, if that means there exists a non-zero vector such that ax equals uh, lambda x if uh yeah right so determinant of a minus lambda i n lambda is is an eigenvector eigenvalue to a eigenvalue of a so the determinant of this matrix uh, is equal is called characteristic equation let's do that let's do an example to understand this one, right? 
All right, let's consider this matrix. Let's make it a blank sheet. All right. Let me copy that down. Yep. This matrix A is minus four, six, and three, five, three, five. Two by two, three, five square matrix right so let's find eigenvalues of this matrix so how do you find eigenvalues you have to consider uh, this characteristic uh, equation so suppose a uh, lambda is an eigenvalue then we know that a let's consider a minus lambda i i is and two by two identity matrix and let's find the determinant of that right so let's recall that a is this matrix minus four six uh, three five minus uh, lambda lambda so you have lambda on the diagonal. Right. So let's simplify this. So yep, someone is uh, so six must be minus in the net six must be minus six. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it should be minus six. Ah, doesn't matter. It's so right. Yeah. All right. So, so minus four minus lambda, and I miss it. Yeah. This one minus this minus six. And this one is three and five minus lambda. Okay. So let's find the determinant of this matrix. So how do you find that? Uh, yep. So this one times this minus this one times this. So right. Let's write that down. Minus one is common. It's uh, take it out 4 plus lambda times 5 minus lambda minus 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 18 minus minus plus 18. So let's simplify this. Uh, let's put this minus sign inside the bracket. Right, uh, lambda squared uh, minus lambda minus 20 plus 18 minus 2. Yeah. All right, this is a quadratic, uh, quadratic polynomial, right? Quadratic equation. Uh, so let's make this one equal to zero, right? Let's make this one equal to zero, then you get quadratic equation. Or right, you know how to find roots of a quadratic equations. Or oh, let's factorize this like lambda and lambda. And this is minus two, then this should be plus one. Now these are the roots. Lambda one is two and other one is one. All right, these one, these are the eigenvalues of matrix A. So, so this is a two by two matrix. Uh, that means it has two eigenvalues. If it is n by n, it has n eigenvalues because so if that is a that was a two by two matrix, 
then we get a quadratic equation. So if you have quadratic equation, we know that it has two roots. If it is an nth order poly, uh, nth order equation, let's say lambda n uh, a n minus one lambda n minus one. This kind of equation, I think you have done these things in your A levels, right? One plus A naught. So how many roots are there? There are n number of roots. That means, so if matrix, the dimension of the matrix is n by n, then you can find n number of eigenvalues, right? So here, the dimension of matrix is two by two. That means you can find only two, two roots, that means two eigenvalues. All right, so there are two eigenvalues. Uh, let's find corresponding eigenvectors. Let's see, all right. So for this eigenvalue, Lambda one, let's consider one of eigenvalues. Um, right? So let's find the corresponding eigenvector, right? All right. So how do you find that? So we know that. So we had to find as the definition. Mm -hmm. So we had to find non-zero vector x such that a x is equal to lambda x. Let's find that. Oh, non zero x. Let's consider n non zero uh, vector, right? Okay. So if this is uh, eigenvector, then this uh, should satisfy, right? A x, or right. oh, this one. This one is same with this. A minus lambda i. Yep. A minus lambda this time is equal to two. Lambda i times your x variable x. So we had to find the relationship between x and i. We have to find the solution to this homogeneous system. Here, look at this homogeneous system. All right, we have learned this one, right? In the morning, right? So this is a homogeneous system because your right-hand side is zero. This is your variable vector. So we are going to find solutions to this linear system. Let's uh, plug these numbers in, so A is, how do we copy that, minus four, minus six, three, five, minus four, minus four, minus four, minus six, and minus six, minus six, what is that, the one, yeah, three, five, three, five, Three five. That is your a and minus two comma. Yep. yep. This should be multiplied by the variable vector, the eigenvector, right? All right. So simplify this. Ah, uh, this becomes minus six. Minus six. Uh, this three, okay, this is your eigenvector, find solutions, so, homogeneous system. Uh, finding solution means, uh, let's reduce this, let's reduce this, uh, you know that, right, let's reduce. Uh, What are the equations? 
Uh, yep, you can. Yep. So let's consider this. Matrix. Let's reduce this. So you can uh, uh, divide. You can do any row operations, right? Uh, let's uh, multiply the second column, uh, uh, first column, first row by uh, one or six or minus one or six. This becomes one one. Uh, let's uh, multiply this the second column, the second row by one or three. This also becomes one comma one, all right. And this is reduced to, so you don't need to consider right hand side because it is zero, right? Uh, you, if you perform row, row uh, operations, this doesn't change because you have zero, zero right hand side, right? So, 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 Let's write the first column. So let's reduce this one. Let's let's. Uh, this is the pivot element, right? So we have to make this one. We have to make this one equal to zero. How do you make this one equal to zero? You, have to, you can do that. Yeah. This becomes so. All right. This is the reduce HLM form, right? Reduce not reduce HLM form. So let's consider our system now. Okay, X1, X2, equals zero, zero. Uh-huh. So, so we get one relation between X and X1 and X2. Right, X1 is equal to minus X2. All right, this is the relation, right? This is the relationship. If you put uh, x2 is a variable, you can you can find infinitely many eigen vectors. How? Here, yeah, this is the relation we got, right? This is the relation we got. So if you put a variable, t is a non-zero variable. is a non-zero variable except zero yep t is a non if t is a non-zero variable then you can find uh, yep. you can find x2 in terms of t which is minus t right so our eigenvectors this is the set of eigenvectors can find infinitely many eigenvectors. So t is common, right? X1 is minus t1, which should be minus one. X2 is t, which should be one. Yeah. Where t is a non-zero, Real number. So this is the base base of that set. So base bases. So from this vector you can generate infinitely many. Uh, this is the base of that this uh, set. So this is called bases or base, right? From this vector, you can generate infinitely many uh, elements. So this set is the, for this uh, eigenvalue, we get infinitely many eigenvectors. This has infinitely many eigenvectors, right? This is the base one, right? Let's go to, let's go by thing here, by thing. Did you understand how to find eigenvectors? Here we get uh, a set of eigenvectors. 
corresponding to this uh, lambda, this lambda, this one here. We get an infinitely many uh, eigenvectors corresponding to this eigenvalue. So, all right, this is the set of eigenvectors. Uh, let's consider the other eigenvalue. What is the other one? The other one is positive one. All right. So let's do the same thing. Uh, uh, then this time, yep, uh, yep. Now let's consider the other one, right? Other one, all right. So let me stop sharing because I am want to upload. Otherwise, I have to stop recording. 